Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lenore von Stein, and this is an episode of The Facts. Uh, this is The Facts is the music and talk, uh, separate. Uh, and this is a, a discussion episode, and we're talking about the reasons for racism, the second part of a discussion about the reasons for racism. And I'm here with Carol Lang, uh, who is professor of history at the Bronx Community College. Um, and we, we, we talked about the, the racism, the economic tool, and or almost purely an economic tool. There's no such thing as race, so it's just jive, you know, it's just, it's just created to serve a purpose, an idea to serve a purpose to separate out peoples and throw them again one another and, and, and justify, you know, why I'm the king and why you're washing the toilet, you know, and that's, that's the story. Um, and so w w we talked, w w in the last conversation we got to the, uh, the Civil War, sort of skimmed over that terrible uh, r restoration after the Civil War and the nightmare of <laughs> the late 1900s, the, of the late whatever that, th those centuries. And so here we are in the era of, uh, it does seem to be very hard to get rid of racism because it, 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 it's held up with something else, the fa foundational thing, this economic stuff. It's really hard to lose it, right? To, to I think it's impossible. I don't think you're going to, as much as there'll be upswelling of people against racism, it's completely endemic in to American society. And so unless people see that their interests at whites and blacks and Asians and all different groups of people have the same interests and join together in, uh, you know, as opposed to in be in opposition to each other, there's no ending this. Because, you know, I mean, d I could just see it working as a teacher at Bronx Community College. Most of my students are, they're all working class students and they come from working class neighborhoods, either from the United States or from the Dominican Republic or, you know, wherever else they come from. And their education is really horrible. They, uh, some of them are, are not even, I mean, they're just barely literate, some of them. Yes. Some of them, you know, just can't really decipher, I, I'm not even talking about words, you know, but in terms of concepts because of the fact that they haven't been educated to think in all critically, you know, they're, and now education is even worse because now it's teaching to the test so that you're not supposed, you don't have time to be creative even if you wanted to be creative. But, you know, it, one of the things about this show in Al Jazeera that I had watched yesterday, um, there was really a clear example of how little money is going into education, especially in the South, as opposed to in the North and especially in wealthier, I mean, it's like twice as much money is going into the North and into the South. And part, part of it has to do with the legacy of Reconstruction because they didn't want to raise taxes. And so you didn't have any money for education or welfare or, or anything. And it was, th at that point, racism was already in. Why did they want to raise taxes during Reconstruction? Well, Reconstruction was the period in which the United States could have gone in a variety of different ways. And because of the northern capitalists who wanted to maintain labor peace in the south and also in the north, they, want, they ended up putting back the same plantation owners, the same. Uh, Jefferson Davis, who was the head yes. of, right? He spent two years in jail. Now, I, this guy committed treason. 750,000 people died because of the Civil War. He spent two years in jail. The vice president, who was the head of the Confederacy, he became the, the governor or senator of Georgia. So what the American ruling class wanted during that time was stability. And so the way to do that was to bring back the people who were going to make sure that there was going to be stability and that there was going to be labor peace and that blacks were going to be back on the plantation making their cotton for the northern textile mills and that you know, it, the, the the American, the, the northern ruling class Republican Party became very conservative because wealth was really the most important thing for them. So the railroads, Wall Street became incredibly important, insurance companies. So that's why they didn't want to increase taxes, because it, it would increase taxes on them? It, it would increase taxes on, on southern plantation owners who, who were part of the club. Right, and the, didn't want to pay the taxes, and plus they didn't want to have education and all those things for poor people, because they didn't 
they weren't concerned about the well-being of Southern blacks or Southern whites. They thought themselves superior to Southern whites as much as they thought themselves superior to Southern blacks, that nobody deserved, you know, it, it was all, you know, a ruse to, to get the Southern whites on their side. But basically, the tenant farmers, the sharecroppers, they did very poorly and they were very poor. So Reconstruction sort of reestablished the old relationship that it existed, except that it put the, the political sphere in the hands of the North and the Northern capitalists as opposed to the Southern plantation owners, who were in some ways like a junior partner to the railroads and Wall Street and the insurance companies and 